little different for the channel that doesn't involve the Falcon and the Mustang. <laughs> Everybody that wants to see the Falcon is gonna be upset. But uh, what we have is a 1965 Ford Bronco that a friend of mine um, found this gentleman, he needed some help. So currently right now it has Fitech EFI and it basically took a crap on him. So uh, he has already purchased a Holly Sniper 2 and he's got the distributor, the box, the coil, all that stuff. And so essentially what I'm gonna do is take all the Fitech stuff off, put the Holly Sniper on and then we're gonna get into the fuel tanks. It's got two fuel tanks. We're gonna, I'm trying to convince them to put the fuel pumps inside the tank. It'll just make it a lot more reliable. And then we'll make it so he can switch between either tanks. And that is gonna be the next project on the channel amongst other things for the year of 2024. But I figured I'd put this on the channel because there's a lot of Ford people that like this stuff. Uh, this Bronco has a 351 Windsor in it. Um, I guess it's hopped up a little bit. I don't know. Uh, ben Alameda built the engine for it. So we're going to get this stuff ripped off, get the new stuff put on. It's ironic that a guy that had so much trouble with Holly is now doing a Sniper 2 install. But this thing's pretty self-explanatory. Plus what I've learned over Rocky Mountain Race Week to now, um, I'm confident I can get it to start, run, and idle with just the wizard set up. And then I think he has plans to take it to Addiction Motorsports, Eddie, and um, have it dyno tuned. So if you care to hang around and watch, I'd appreciate you do so. I'm gonna go get some argon right now, get back to the house and we're gonna get cranking. The 1973 Ford Bronco. To prove that it has what it takes to tame most any terrain, with features that give it an extra margin of dependability and versatility for work or recreation. Features like extra maneuverability. Bronco short 92 inch wheelbase is perfect for those off-road ups and downs. Or when coming in for a landing, Bronco can take it front and rear with long progressive leaf springs to smooth and stabilize as well as to reduce bottoming when you're carrying a heavy load. All right, we're back from Argonne. We get this thing up on the lift and uh, get cranking on it. Those damn Argonne bottles are heavy. My back hurts. y'all um that was just a quick time lapse greg the owner of this bronco was here and we were just kind of shooting the stuff and hanging out while i was taking all of the fight tech stuff off so all the the major components of the fight tech are off but whoever wired it did kind of a questionable jobs a lot of things that i probably wouldn't have done and so i'm trying to make sure everything exclusive to the fight tech I get out of here wiring wise and I don't cut something for something else. Uh, this thing has a winch, some uh, like underglow lighting and a bunch of other things that I don't wanna just snip assuming that, hey, that goes here and it not go there. So I've slowly just been going through this wiring um, and taking it apart, making sure that I don't regret cutting something later. So I'll flip the camera around and show you what we got. So. quite a mess i've gotten a lot of it out already stuff that you guys didn't see because i was talking with uh, the owner um, over here set the holly and all that stuff we're gonna move it somewhere else um might i initially told him back here but maybe i might go over here i don't know uh 
I just want this to be really clean. Um, he takes this thing to shows, and so I want it to be really clean with the wires. Ram, nice. All right, you guys, it is Saturday, January 6, 2024, and I spent a fair amount of time yesterday taking off the old uh, Fitec wiring, and a lot of it, as you can see, is, like I mentioned before, it's pretty shaky. Um, I have since, I've got almost everything figured out except for there's this yellow wire and there's another yellow wire that goes underneath the, the Bronco. So I don't know if that's for the fuel pumps or not. I need to figure that out. I was able to eliminate one of uh, one of the relays over here that's running the fan. We're going to have the Holly run the fan and we're going to ditch this mess that this person had prior, that they had wired prior and we're going to go to a a waterproof uh, relay just like Holly uses here. Um, but I want to clean all this stuff up. I'm a little reluctant to get too far ahead of myself and tell the gentleman that owns this Bronco he's getting the basically the CDI box and the coil. Um, initially I, I was going to put it back there but I am kind of liking the way that this routes. I've got to get over here anyways because the battery's here so you know, the Holly hooks right to the battery. There's the ignition wire. Um, all that stuff is kind of here. So I think I'm gonna come around here like this. Um, and what I've done so far is I've pulled these two nuts off. I'm gonna make a piece of metal that'll bolt in place here and basically hold, I wanna hold this uh, connector about right here. It'll, should be far enough away from the heat um, but the goal is to uh, make it to where it's clean. So if I make something that I can catch these two on and I can, um, you know, grab it here, uh, this is going to have to go in the cab, but if I can grab it and nicely hold it there, that's what I'm looking for. And then, uh, my fuel pump relay ignition and all that stuff. This box kind of proposes a little bit of an issue, but I may have to make something to get these over here and get these mounted nicely as well. But nonetheless, uh, I'm gonna get on the, the, the TIG. I've already got some stuff that I had made when I was mounting my intercooler, so I may be able to just use kind of what I got and uh, make something that'll catch these two bolts and make it to where I can mount this nicely. All right, I've done some grinding, and like I said, I already had some other pieces when I mounted my uh, inner core that I had made. Flip the camera around, show you. I'm just gonna tack this, and then we'll set it up there and make sure it'll fit. So these are the two pieces that I've already had made. That's the one you see me bent. I'm just gonna tack with the TIG, and then we'll go see if it fits. Bingo. All right, you guys, it is Friday, January 12th, and I am back here on the Bronco. Uh, I'm back here on the fuel injection. I made the bracket to hold the big plug for the Holly Sniper EFI, and now I'm making a bracket that's gonna hold the coil, and he, uh, Greg, the guy that owns this, bought a, an ignition box, their ignition box. So I'm making a bracket to hold that, and I'm trying to clean all these wires up. I'm not gonna take away from anybody else's work, but there's a lot of things I would have done differently. And I wanna make sure when he leaves here 
Um, all of the Holly stuff that I've done is easy to get to and diagnose if there ever is a problem. And then what I'd like to do is take some of this other stuff somebody has wired and kind of just clean it up. It's a mess over here and it's hard to diagnose a problem when you have just a bunch of wires that have just been attached to the battery. I just, I don't like it. So let me show you what I'm cranking on right now. Well, pardon the mess, but basically I've taken a quarter inch piece of aluminum, drilled and tapped. So one side will hold the coil. The other side will hold the ignition box and I am using the Eastwood surfacer. Uh, I'll get the camera set up. We're gonna change it from what it looks like here. Merle gave me some pieces of aluminum that had set outside. We'll surface it. That along with this, this will get welded to the bottom and then we'll get some holes drilled in this so that we can bolt it into the fender. And that'll give us a nice clean place. Excuse me, that'll give us a nice clean place to mount that coil and EFI and then we can kind of work our way back. Um, you know, they sell these kits long, these EFI kits long, and we'll get all that stuff tidied up. So we'll get the surfacer going on this. That's what it looks like before. pretty good. I didn't film welding the bracket for the coil and the sniper CDI box, but this is gonna be for, I'll show you two battery lug terminal deals that I got uh, Greg to purchase. So I'll flip this around, it ain't the best. I'm still learning. Aluminum just is a lot hotter, so I feel like I can't get my hands as close. But I'll let this cool down and then we'll get everything bolted up and go get it set in there. All right, y'all, it is Friday, January 19th, and we are on the Bronco project. We are converting this vehicle from Phytech to Holly Sniper 2, as you know. And last Sunday I worked out here just with the radio on and didn't film anything. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you where we're at. I'm trying to get this done as fast as possible. I know the gentleman wants to be able to drive it. <clears throat> the issue for me has been trying to figure out all of the wiring that was previously here. It was horrific, a fire waiting to happen. Uh, I'm not sure if I said that already or not on this video, but sorting through somebody else's rat's nest and trying to figure out what they've done is a lot of work. So let me flip the camera around and show you what I have so far. Okay, so I've gotten everything other than the Holly. The Holly and the CDI box are, will end up back on the battery. But other than that, I've gotten everything off the battery. I've built this holder. And there's basically, these are, I guess you could call like a, uh, um, I forget what you call them, where the wires are just, you know, everything you tie to it is, uh, whatchamacallit. Dang, what is that thing called? A bus bar so this is kind of like a bus bar but basically the goal was to get all of this stuff off of that battery and over here to where number one it's serviceable but number two if anything that he's got hooked because he's got a compressor and a winch and all this stuff 
if any of it has an issue, it's easy to isolate the problem and figure it out. You know, we got um, stuff for amps and all that. So I built this bracket as well, drilled and tapped those holes. That holds the coil. And then the CDI box is a Holly Sniper CDI box, really small. Um, none of these wires are terminated yet. I need to terminate them. But something that's really hard to see what I did on Sunday is I actually built, there's a like a half inch bar that I built and basically it's allowing me uh allowing me and allowing the gentleman that owns this vehicle serviceability for the future so you know the relays and the fuses are all now bolted in and nice before they were just you know screwed in like that um and it just looked horrible um i gotta get this thing over on top dead center he has a uh, MSD dual SIM distributor for it. Uh, we kind of went round and round with Holly with adapters and which one works with this and that. But we got that sorted out today, which um, I've, I need to make a little adapter wire. They want to sell him one for like 30 bucks. And I'm like, Greg, I can put a connector on the end and save you, all, you know, 30 bucks plus shipping and tax. And then the next goal is to get this thing up in the air, get the gas tanks out of it and... Um, I th I've got Greg convinced I want to get those fuel pumps in the tank just like a modern vehicle um, some of the older gentlemen that mess with carburetors and this and that they I think are it's foreign to them to have the fuel pump in the tank but the fuel pump runs cooler it's it's what every car manufacturer is doing today and that's what I want to do for this I want him to be able to get in this thing just like a modern car and drive it and drive and not worry about this loud fuel pump. And when we get this thing up in the air, I'll show you some of the the plumbing and the wiring is kind of atrocious that, that somebody had done before that, but maybe that, that was all they were capable of doing. But at any rate, um, that's kind of the progress that will go. And then once we're done with the fuel tanks and the fuel pumps and all of that, then we'll get this thing started up and we'll, you know, get the tune as as good as, as I'm gonna be able to get it in, in the, the controller hand controller and then he's probably gonna have to take it to uh, a, a dyno and have somebody dyno tune it all right good evening y'all it's sunday the 28th and we're out here working on the bronco i uh, try to get out here as much as i can but uh you know how that goes anyways i want to show you this is the scary stuff about working on something that somebody else has got into so obviously when you're hooking up the holly you need to find the power when the key's on and stays on when you crank i've located that but let me show you what else i've located so there was a bunch of wires soldered to this blue wire here this is the ignition on but there's all these wires that come out of the factory harness i have no idea what they are they're just cut and they were wrapped up same as over here i think i showed you i believe that's probably the alternator harness because um, it's now a one wire alternator and there's nothing else going to it so i think they just cut it up and taped it up so they did the same thing here we're going to put some heat shrink on all of these um no idea what they are and then when we do our connector we're going to put a weather pack connector over here so that this ignition wire the tack wire all of that stuff can be unplugged i think we're going to include the fuel pump in that too and then we'll have um, when it plugs in the fuel pump wire go down to the fuel pumps. But that's what you get when you're working on stuff. I was talking to a buddy who was asking me, you know, well, why are you doing this and why are you doing that? Well, all of this stuff ties together. So the fan is ran by the Holly, the fuel pumps ran by the Holly. All this stuff is ran by the Holly. So when you're taking out what somebody else put in, um, it's not just uh, unplug that and plug this in. It just doesn't work that way. So before they had the wire for the fan coming through here, total cut hazard. Um, we've went ahead and, and built a wiring harness for it and it'll stay inside there. It's not gonna get eaten by anything or cut. We've also had to take uh, this harness. This is the harness that goes to the ARB and we made sure that this thing is all tied up and nice and not gonna go anywhere. And yeah, some of the fun stuff when you're building a car that somebody or working on a car that somebody else has already been into 
All right, Monday night, the 29th, we're back on the Bronco. And yesterday I finished up with some wiring. I still got a few things left. I don't know. I don't know if I talked about it last yesterday or not, but so I've got all of the Holly wiring harness pretty much done other than the fuel pump. Uh, there's these two wires. I have no idea what they're for. I got to underneath the dash is an absolute disaster. I'll try to get some video underneath there, but uh, let me flip the camera around. All right, so I've got my uh, connector that I made and the harness that goes all the way over, up and over to that thing that I made and all the way over. Um, these two wires, no clue what these are. I got to get underneath the dash and probably trace them to the bottom. They go down near the fuel pump. Underneath there is a holly red and they do go down there. So I gotta figure that out. But what I'm gonna do now, I need to find top dead center number one. And then I've gotta measure this balancer, see the diameter, and then we can pull. I've gotta get this, this deal, I guess 50 degrees before top dead center. And then we'll pull the MSD distributor out. We have the big one, we've got a dual sink that, uh, this customer bought so we got to get the dual sink in there but we've got to measure the balancer see what size it is so we know we're 50 degrees before top dead center is because i doubt it's marked on the balancer i have not checked but i highly doubt that it's marked um, but right now we're going to crank this thing over and get it to where we're on the compression stroke number one and we'll pull this driver out so all i've done is manufacture a little switch that i can Do that with and we'll get our finger here number one store but I can't find it. Right. That should get us close there. I gotta check the balancer. Ooh that baby's hot. Okay, we got the balancer at 50 degrees before top dead center. I'm getting ready to put the distributor in. I was able to get in there and mark this balancer. And so now we're gonna drop the distributor in and it look it's looking like I can't get everything lined up with the distributor until the holly has got power. You've got a, some LED lights and whatnot. So I'll at least get the distributor in, get it pointed at number one, and then we'll get the spark plug wires on it and that'll probably do it for tonight. I've got some stuff I gotta do for work. So I got to go in and do that and uh, we'll get this banged out and I'll catch up with you tomorrow. I gotta go in, I got some stuff I gotta do for work. So, check you guys out tomorrow night.